This is Slack. Slack is an organizational chat client. Sign into the chat via your web browser or your mobile device for access to all of your conversations or settings. Once signed in, you go into a channel or a room and talk to the individuals that are part of that channel in your organization. What makes Slack special is how clean it is. If you look around, you'll notice plenty of pretty colors, pictures of people, and delightful sounds for new notifications. It holds on to every single message submitted into a channel. So if you scroll to the top here, even if you're a new user added to that room, you can see the entire history of that channel, which is a little unlike email, where you get added midway through and only see part of the conversation, depending on which message the person replied to. In this case, every message is on one layer. Users can also opt in and out of channels, all except for basically one. In this case, our general channel is locked in, but test room can be left. I can also change notifications by going up here and changing it to only notify me on desktop or just when someone mentions my name on my mobile device. And even if I don't really want to receive notifications today, I can just mute it rather than leaving it. So the layout's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot of layers to it. This is the channel listing, which if this were longer, I'd probably have to scroll more. These are all the people in the organization, and I can send direct messages by selecting their name. So if I were to say select Zach, I can just select, type in a message and select enter, and it would go directly to him, and nobody else would see it. If I want, I can also create private groups. So these would be managed by one person, whereas the channel is managed by the server. So once I leave a private group I create, it disappears, and all of that history can be technically lost. You can also just add these for a few small private projects, and maybe once they grow beyond us, we can create a channel for it. But it really depends on you. Channels are just fine as well. They just tend to be public by default, though I'm sure that can be changed. Over on the right-hand side, we have a few different things to select. Let me go back to my test room. We have the channel info, which is available by selecting the eye. We can see what items have been pinned. So I'm going to remove a pinned item. These are just stuck here for anyone to see, kind of like a, a little bulletin board at the top of the channel. And especially when these things become hundreds of lines long, it can be a little daunting to try to go through and find the important tidbits. So pinning it makes it easy for new members to find relevant stuff, even when they weren't part of the conversation originally. So for instance, if I want to add a document here, I can do it a couple of ways. You can drag and drop a lot of things from web browsers, or you can select the plus sign right here and choose Upload. Now I've already added this recently, so I'm probably going to get a message like this one down here. It says, I didn't unfurl, you've already shared this recently. But when you haven't shared it recently, you get two things. You get the actual image if you upload it, or if you just copy a URL from a shared source, like we have uh, Google Drive linked in with our Slack, you can also link Dropbox and a number of other services, you get a nice pretty URL that basically says, hey, this was shared from your Google Drive, which is linked with this uh, organization and here's the file name. So you can also add little comments that are relevant immediately to that file so it doesn't get lost in the, uh, the hubbub down below. Now if I don't want to pin something for everyone to see but I want to keep track, I can star it. This is your personal bookmark area. So if I select the stars up here, I can see everything starred in every channel. I can then jump to it by selecting that or just going directly to the URL, however you want to do it. Uh, you can also publicly call someone out, so if you need someone's help in a channel, even if they're not a member, you can simply type in their name, and it'll show up. And they can go back, of course they'll get a notification, but they can go back and see a full list by selecting the at symbol and seeing all the different times that they've been called out or mentioned inside of a channel. And of course, finally, you can search out anything. So they give you a couple of helpful commands here, but if you want to search out any text or file names, it'll pull that up here. So let's go with uh, marketing outreach and select enter. There we go. So it's made it nice and clean for me and showed me the conversation and context a little and I can jump to that immediately. I can also filter down what I'm searching here to only include things in the channels uh, that I'm in or the only... Uh, no, actually that's not a feature. I guess you can only search channels that you're not part of as an option. Uh, but, or you can just jump straight to the file here, and that's the one I was looking for. So it's not technically hosted in Slack, but it is mentioned in it and linked to it. So it's good enough, and then I can star that here, and so on. Anyway, I kind of like Slack, mostly because it replaces a lot of email back and forth. So rather than walking into a room full of shouting people and shouting your own message, you can just sort of have a conversation with a group of people, you know, walk in and out as needed. There's a lot more control. Also, the sounds really are pleasant. Take a look. 
Anyway, have a good day. Let me know if you have any questions.